Hello everyone. Um, I've, I've got to stand here. Hey, Daniela. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Bronwyn. Um, there's a lot of people that I haven't met in the room. There's a couple that I have. I work in the Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering um, on the quality program. I've been lecturing, I started lecturing part-time in 2012 um, and I took on a full-time position in 2015. Um, the period that I'm talking to or the period that I'm talking about was a period when I had um, first year statistics students, I lecture statistics and research methodology, but the talk, my talk is predominantly on the statistics um, lectures. I had first year statistics, na national diploma, industrial engineering students, and I had a class of BTEC statistics students as well. Um, and this is my reflection. Um, so fees must fall. That needs no introduction to us. We, we lived it. We experienced the emotions. We, we know the impact it had on us. Um, and um, so this talk is about what I did in the time that fees must fall took place. However, using Toronto as a framework, when I started reflecting, when we started reflecting, um, there were actually things before fees must fall that played a role in my response, in the way that I responded responded during fees must fall um, and so I'm going to share my my story and the outcome of my reflection um, using Toronto attentiveness um, responsibility competence uh, what's it? responsiveness and solidarity um, within that framework okay so um, attentiveness is is awareness uh, I've got some things on the on the slides there, but I'm going to speak from my I'm going to speak on a more personal on a more personal level. It's it's awareness. Now, it's the truth is um, I love my job. I really love my job. I, not what I initially studied. I don't have any educational qualification, none whatsoever. I studied lab science, and and I happened. What happened? I, I, I moved towards education and I'm very grateful for the job, but I'm very grateful for the job because even though I know I'm just a small ball bearing, tiny, tiny, tiny ball bearing in this big organization, I, I feel that my little ball bearing makes a difference. And, and I, I think it's because of that, that my awareness is there. I'm aware of what's happening at CPUT. I've, I've been aware because I'm interested of what's happening at CPUT. I'm aware of my role, my identity as a lecturer, that ball bearing, what must that ball bearing do? And I'm aware of my students. Um, uh, I enjoy my students. I, I enjoy the work. And and my response to fees must fall, actually, it's because of this awareness that I did what I did. And it will all come together later when, when I get to responsiveness and what, what I did, what I did. Um, yeah. Um, in, in my reflection, I now I, I should actually say that I, I, I actually have missed saying that that when fees must fall happen, when we had these disruptions, I actually decided to continue. Um, and and the reason why I decided to continue is looking around me, being aware of what was happening around me. I obtained a general feeling from my students: Are we going to continue or not? And then I made the decision based on individual cases. And that is based on being aware of what was happening at CPUT. Before fees must fall, I realized there's a need for technology. I realized there's a place for technology in my teaching and learning. And I had done things to, to upskill myself. Um, I liked that. So, so that was part of my awareness of myself, where I wanted to go personally. But the most important was my students. Um, and I was aware of cases, situations that they were in, and that is why I decided to continue. Being aware gives you a sense of responsibility. If you are aware of what's happening, then, then you, I think, being aware of what was happening gave me the gut feeling to continue. It was based on my gut that I continued. I took responsibility because I could see, you know, what was happening. And in the institution, for myself personally, and for my students, I knew about the student who had left a child in George, for example, so that she could finish her studies. I knew about the student that was couch surfing. And I knew about the student who was working two jobs. 
and and based on that now later on I, I i questioned my outlook on that but at the time when i made the decision to continue that was when i decided to take on this responsibility for those individual cases for those students and because i'd also upskilled myself when fees must fall occurred the first time look remember we had it twice um i, so I had two experiences when it occurred the first time because i'd upskilled myself it wasn't difficult for me to move into an online blended space um, at the time. And then when it happened the second time, it was even easier with the hindsight and the experience of what had happened previously. And so we got started. We used WhatsApp um, and we used, at the, the first time it happened, I relied predominantly on our LMS, which is Blackboard. The second time I went into more tools. So then I considered competence. That, that awareness and that responsibility, that, well, the awareness is, occurs by itself, the responsibility is taking action and, and taking on this duty, deciding to take on this duty, you can only do it if you have a certain level of competence. And um, my competence came from starting teaching, starting in my teaching practices in 2013. Um, and I'd like to actually put it out there that the blended learning, the concept of blended learning is, is not something that we should have actually started thinking about when fees must fall happen. The, the truth is in 2013, and this is facing traditional lecturer challenges, you have big classes, you have students that need extra support, and you could reach them um, and support them outside of the traditional classroom environment, you know, students want to see you. Blackboard is a tool to do that. I remember having a conversation with my HOD in 2013 and telling him, Andre, Andre, this is my HOD. I said, Andre, I can't work more hours in the day. Uh, that's just impossible. I need to find ways to work smarter. And, and then that's when I thought, what is available for us at CPUT? And the learner management system was actually available. Yes, it has its problems. And that's something I'll speak about later, but the learner management system is available. And so I went on these courses and I upskilled myself then. And it's self-taught software. It really is self-taught software, but there is support, more support now than what there was then. Um, and besides that, also in terms of my competence, um, being involved in the OER, educational, Open Educational Resource Project, Daniela mentioned, that was also good for me um, because it gave me confidence. Um, we, we often feel isolated and alone in your department, in your bubble. If you, there's very few people, I think, or maybe there's more than what I'm thinking, but that, that want to really move into a very rigorous online blended learning type of environment. Um, and being involved with these like-minded individuals, and I could get constructive criticism from them, and they could give me advice and, and also just sheer feeling of, well, I understand what you're going through, this is what I've done, and so on. That was very good for my development and for my sense of competence and my sense of confidence. Okay, so I said being involved in that um, gave me confidence, and my OER colleagues were instrumental in my personal development and my personal growth. And so when Fees Muscle happened last year, on top of the previous experiences, also being part of that project, just that was part of me responding without even thinking too much about it. I could just get involved. So responsiveness is listening. So yes, okay. So now, now this is now full on where I start speaking about fees must fall. All of this led up to fees must fall. Responsiveness is where I actually responded within fees must fall. Because what we found with, within fees must fall is that the learner management system was not enough. We had WhatsApp groups. We all use WhatsApp groups to communicate. And so we could respond to students. We could respond to our colleagues. We could respond to the needs that came came along with Fees Must Fall. Um, but I actually started improving my practices. So this is where Fees Must Fall was also actually good for me because it pushed me into a position where I had no choice. In order to reach my students, um, I had to use more tools. Um, and it was scary. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's scary putting yourself out there. And I've made mistakes. I've made horrible mistakes. But my students are forgiving. And I think my, that, that, that's something that I've learned. Students are forgiving. They're there for a reason. We're actually all on the same team. 
and so this sort of like forced me to make more screencasts i use free software which is screencast o i didn't really need besides wi-fi and that's an undeniable fact we need we need data we need wi-fi we need an internet connection i use google drive google drive didn't help me much more because my students had a problem with data and that's when i moved on to youtube and my the sense that i got from the c is my students and some of my students are in really bad financial positions but they communicated with me and youtube worked for them and then of course whatsapp that we all used as well and then as a side note my pass rate at the end of the day now it's not about pass rates <laughs> it's about what the students knows but if i may use that pass rate as an indication my pass rate was really very really good was over 70% for my first year students which i believe is really very really good and this is for statistics and for my btech students i had 100% pass rate um and yeah i i honestly think it's not about just passing the exams i do believe that there's a better person that left the end of my course than what there was before and so that's the bit i wrote in my reflection about responsiveness um the feedback that i received from the students was positive it encouraged me to continue the the practice in a combination of whatsapp the learner management um system the discussions we had in there youtube's uh, uh, i put my screen cast that are the free screen it looks screen cast that i made with free software on youtube um i can conclude i concluded the academic year for both classes and i believe it was a success and then here's the issue in my reflection only did did it highlight major gaps was the solidarity i believed that i was in solidarity with my students but i hadn't allowed myself to think beyond my classroom environment so there's this fees must fall protest that's happening and there's a reason for it happening but i hadn't considered that um and i don't even know i'm not even going to state my position because i haven't i haven't actually in my own mind figured out my position but i do know that there are things there that i not only empathize with us sympathize with there's there's a reason why all of this happened in the first place but at the same time my eyes my focus was on as i mentioned earlier on the institution i'm part of this institution i get paid by cput to do a job um and and that was something that drove me or guided me i'm a lecturer i'm i'm a mentor i'm a teacher i i support my students that also guided me so my focus was there and my focus was on my students so i did what i did um and by my own standards i just told you i think it was a success but was that maybe a problem my own standards that my own standards and not considering that i was actually this ball bearing belongs to a greater machine a much greater machine and so there is where, where my discussions with my colleagues and we tried to framework actually opened up my eyes and made me realize that these discussions that Daniela was speaking about they they are not only useful they vital they vital discussions because what do we what do we go or what do we do next or where do we go from here um i learned from the graph what like i said this is yeah that anyway so my personal lessons i'm going to wrap up my personal lessons that i learned from this experience is it it pays to be prepared um like i said it wasn't fees must fall that was the indication that we needed to start using online and educational technologies if we honest with ourselves this has been coming on for a couple of years and lucky for me i'd been prepared and it paid off that i was prepared with with um using the 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 online previously in my classes also with being in the OER project um but also this experience has actually highlighted to us that preparation is not only learning how to use online it's having these dis discussions before so that if something does happen how are we going to respond as individuals and as a collective um and either you trust your system or not now i'm going to throw in a little bit of a personal story few years ago i had a boyfriend who was a it developer and i because i lecture stats i use excel a lot and i fight with excel i this bloody excel doesn't want to work etc 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 and he once told me either you trust your system or you don't and that got me thinking it's the same with blackboard 
Either you trust it or not. And you know what? I can guarantee you. Every time I fight with Excel and every time I want to curse and say, it doesn't know what it's talking about. If I go back, I'll actually see that Excel works. It was me that didn't know how to do it. And I feel as strongly about our learner management system. I feel as strongly about technology. So either we've got to make a decision. We're going to trust it or we're not going to trust it. And then if you lead, your students will follow. This has been my experience. By, by leading, and leading is not instructing. Leading is actually, by example, showing the way. Guiding, being the example. So there's, not, there's no right and there's no wrong. Also, once again, I take that stance. There's no right and there's wrong. It's how do we live and what is our duty? Is it good enough to say doing my best is my duty? Whose best is the best? Or should we have understanding, empathize with others, and change the way that we behave? So uh, the, my final thought is I think that, I think my humble opinion is we should just endeavor to grow and the, the characteristics, the virtues in us um, and the character tra traits in us that will enhance our personal and our collective development at CPUT. Are there any questions? I want to move it around. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not feeling any love. <laughs> I got in my best shirt and there are no questions. Yes. Thank you, Cheryl. So, um, I know you're not teaching this semester, but yes. are you active in any of the products that you that you produce during Italy? I mean, are you using any of the things you learned now? I am, I am. I'm not using it for dice, though. I'm not using it for the department. Okay. It's a, yeah. So I, uh, I've made, um, I, I've gotten involved with the, it's, it's a combination. It's not for our students specifically. Our students are involved in a project with industry, actually. Mm -hmm. So in industry, I'm doing a quality awareness, uh, like a quality awareness training thing. So I'm, I'm doing that. Um, and then, of course, I'm not teaching classes, but actually um, I, I've got master students, I'm supervising students. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, it's, it's actually not products that I used in FME, but it's online products. So marking, I'm marking yeah. using Blackboard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's wonderful. Marking using Blackboard. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, just a question from my side. You know, you, you outlined the circumstances and these must fall and when you start with all of this. Mm -hmm. So the question just is that, what is your sense, what was what has been this, the biggest the challenges that students actually face Data. when you start oh, when you start moving as a lecturer, you start moving over into blended learning. What are those challenges that they face, and what is their experience, you know, of of this shift? I I think as with, and, and I'm going out on a limb now. You didn't, know, but I think it's a it's it's a common challenge. It's not only students; it's the staff members as well. There's a fear that you're going to make a mistake. But as a lecturer, in my experience, and this is hundred percent of the time, if you encourage them, if you encourage them, the students will move. And they will find, like I found, that it's actually much easier than what you think. That's in terms of the technical abilities. But the other thing that's more difficult, the bigger challenge, is that access, the inequality. So I think that that is maybe where most of the, the focus in terms of our efforts to move things to a more blended space should, should go in. I don't think it should be in... I, I think that there's a space for training and encouraging people to go... But that is a minor challenge compared to the inequality. Did yeah, that answer your question? question? Yeah. Can I ask a follow-up question? Of course. You're teaching on the youth equality program. I am. Okay. Happy so time. my sense is that the students on the youth equality program, a lot of them are already working adults. Mm -hmm. They're not the, they're not students that are just full-time. Mm -hmm. yeah, most of them are not full, just full-time mm -hmm. students. Although I had a first year class last yeah, year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but, but if we look at the BTEC group, because I think the BTEC group is very close to what we're working towards in terms of the post graduate. Mm -hmm. um, if, if access is, is a problem for them, is it because they don't 
then not as well, they don't have access at home, or they don't have access at work. Where, where exactly does this stop them I mean, do they have, what are those, the kinds of constraints? I, I, I had a class, well, I'm going to use, and it's, man, I'm a statistics lecturer, so I know that you mustn't infer on a greater population using a limited sample, that is my class. But there was only, in my BTEC group, there was only one student that had problem with access, but she managed, you know. I, I think the daughter problem is more with the undergrad student. I, I, the, my experience is my beta guys, most of them had access to Wi-Fi either at work or at home. But I think the important with her lesson is that you listen to your students. So she had shared first the screencast on the LMS, then on Google Drive, and then on YouTube. And only on YouTube she got the feedback, this is okay now. We can manage with that. So it's about trying to find what the most resource yeah. economic yeah. approach there is yeah. that you could use. Yeah. And also, I think you would make them shorter and shorter. So it's mm. about responding to your students' feedback. What can they actually access? What is ethical to expect them to access? So what is, you can even negotiate with them, how much data per month is ethical or fair for you? What can you manage and how can I manage to get the content that you need to have to you within that? <coughs> so it's, a, it's that awareness of, because there are a lot of lectures who put like hour long videos on the elements and never think about how will the student ever yeah. download it, access it, yeah. listen to it. Yeah. So it's that sensitivity to the student's need. As long as you're aware mm. of what you're, as long as you test yeah. different lo locations, how long does it take to download that video for a student? Ask them. Maybe it's the easiest way to share it via WhatsApp, even if the video is compromised. You know, it's about that sensitivity and, and the willingness to adapt and to try out different things mm -hmm. until you find the formula that works for you yeah. and your students. My time is up, but I'm going to share like a funny as I leave the podium. So, Marianne was a student. She was like, she, well, we were on WhatsApp and she says, don't have daughter, school girl, and the other students gave a daughter. So, <laughs> 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 <laughs>